Hi, I'm Roxana Scott from USA Today Sports. I'm here with Helen Maroulis, who made history in Rio just a few days ago, becoming the first woman to win, first American woman to win Olympic gold in the sport of wrestling. Thank you for being here, Helen. Thank you for having me. So you are a world champion. It mm -hmm. wasn't quite a shock that you won Olympic gold, mm -hmm. um, but to do it, you had to beat one of the best wrestlers in the world, mm -hmm. um, Sayori Yoshida of Japan. What was that like for you to beat her, someone you'd studied for a long time? And just the celebration of that moment, both of you were <laughs> emotional after. Yes, um, it was definitely a very emotional moment. Um, and I, I've just, the more I've processed it, the more I've realized, I think I thought when I was gonna beat her that it was gonna feel like this David and Goliath moment and that I'd, I'd you know, conquered this, this giant. And um, instead it just felt like just it was just this very pure moment of just emotions where it was like here's someone that I admired who had accomplished so much in the sport who was such a legend and I had been you know dreaming about wrestling her for years and every you know all the times I studied her it was for the purpose of of competing against her and so to have that um, moment and that honor and that joy to just do that and do what I love and against her against this great opponent it was um, you know it wasn't about like kind of you know beating your chest after and winning and fist pumping it was just like wow I gave it my all that was everything I had and I'm just left with all these emotions of joy and then I look over and I see her in defeat and it was just like I know both of those feelings and so it was just this very powerful emotional moment. Okay and just for background she was a three-time Olympic gold medalist she won golds the last three Olympics mm -hmm. um, and is quite a, a legend in Japan. Mm -hmm. Um, you had mentioned, I, I read somewhere that um, you didn't see her as your enemy. Mm -hmm. you, you thought it was an honor to wrestle against her on the mat. Yeah, um, and that, that mindset and that perspective, I think, I don't know exactly when it started changing, but, um, you know, just when I started studying her again, I, I've said I, I was looking for her weaknesses, and it was like, well, the way you're going to beat her is by, um, you know, kind of, you know, maybe bashing, oh, she's not good at this, or I'll, I'll beat her at this, or you're, you're looking for these things to study, and, um, and I couldn't find anything. And then, you know, uh, I met her at World Cup and we did, um, you know, I had a couple days of camp in Japan and she was so nice, she was so kind to me. Um, she came up and congratulated me after I won Worlds in 2015 and, you know, sought me out to shake my hand. And so it was just like, I, she's not my enemy. And um, so instead of studying her weaknesses throughout the years, I just, you know, I said, well, what makes her a champion? Because, um, not what makes her win, because that's you know the wrestling part of it, but really what makes her a champion. And um, when I studied her mindset and saw the personality that she had, it was it was like wow, I really respect this person, and I hope that if I win, that um, that I will emulate you know these characteristics as well, because she was just so humble and so kind, and you can tell she just has a genuine love and passion for the sport, and I, you know, I have that as well. So it was like, just it really was an honor to wrestle her. And how did you celebrate your gold medal? Well, I ate chocolate, <laughs> um, but you know, I just they, you know, rush you right after the match. Um, I, you know, I hugged my coach, and I remember walking on the mat, and I was looking for my family. And every match all day, you know, I'd walk out and I'd hear everyone cheering, and it was just no like, be in the zone, you know, just focus, walk to that mat. And so I never even looked in the stands to see where my parents were sitting, and it was. So after I had won, it was like, wow, I, I don't even know where they are. And I just remember, I'm like, where's my mom? Where's my dad? You know, and uh, when I found them just to jump in their arms, that was, that was such a celebration. I mean, it's like pure emotion, you know, nothing's planned out. We didn't, you know, I didn't know my dad was going to squeeze me half to death. <laughs> so it was just really, uh, it was just fun. And what did you do like the days after you did a lot of media? <laughs> and yeah, so I, I didn't. I really didn't have a plan for what life was going to be like after August 18th. I mean, in my mind, I just, I'm like, I can't plan, think of anything. I have no idea what's going to happen. And so right after the, the next day, it was crazy. All these press conferences were scheduled and, you know, going from one thing to the next. And it's it was just a uh, whirlwind because I really didn't have any expectation. I had no idea what to expect. And so, which probably made it easier because if I had expected to have a day to relax, that definitely wouldn't have been it. So it was nice and it was great to just take a breath and to say, wow, I, you know, you, it's like, um, I've discussed this with my teammate Elena and we're like, you know, we're, we're making these decisions to the best of our ability, hoping that it's the right thing, that this is the right way to do it, the right way to prepare. But until, you know, until you win, you don't know if it was or wasn't. And um, so after I won and they're asking me what I'm, you know, what I'm doing, it's like, wow, I really, 
like that was you know the right thing or that that did work or this this whole training plan and trusting my coaches and you know trusting God and trusting myself okay this worked out and so to just be able to share that with people after was really um, it was really fun now I saw that presidential nominee uh, Hillary Clinton <laughs> tweeted at you yes what was that like I know you got a lot of uh, <laughs> mentions on Twitter yeah and social media. Um, Hillary Clinton and uh, First Lady Michelle Obama and I mean I was I was shocked in my I mean again I was I was in my bubble leading up into the competition and I didn't uh, I didn't really think about media or anything or um, you know what this gold medal could do I really just thought about um, the journey for myself and what I wanted to accomplish and so after to know that people watch women's wrestling and that they paid attention to it and that they knew that history was made and you know <laughs> for these people to tweet I'm like wow this is awesome you know I hope this um, generates change and um, you know growth in women's wrestling I mean that's always been my goal um, is to give back to the sport that gave so much to me so to see some recognition from um, you know these very, very prominent individuals was really cool. Now you've been very much an advocate for your sport um, mm -hmm. when wrestling was you know, kind of on the bubble on whether it would be in the Olympic Games and you've also promoted women's wrestling internationally. Mm -hmm. Is that um, something you think you'll continue to do? Oh, absolutely. I, it's like I can't share the message enough. I, I <laughs> could talk for hours about how life-changing wrestling is. And um, for United World Wrestling, you know, the sports governing body, um, when they asked me to be a part of the Super 8 campaign, to um, help grow women's wrestling. It, uh, I was chosen amongst eight individuals. Uh, Sayori Yoshida was one of them. My Swedish opponent, Sofia Madsen, was one of them. And um, even another girl at my weight from Senegal, uh, Isabel. And so, you know, it's just crazy because her story is so different from mine. You know, she grew up res traditional wrestling in her village. or um, So it's just amazing to see um, internationally the impact that women's wrestling can have and how it can help change lives. And so I just want to, sh you know, share that locally as well and as um, globally also. Now for people who don't know, can you tell us how you got your start in wrestling? <laughs> um, I started wrestling when I was seven years old. Um, my little brother had just joined the sport and my mom didn't want to make him quit. So she just asked me to take my shoes off and jump in there and um, be a dummy. And after about two weeks of all these hard workouts, I went to my parents and I said, hey, this isn't fair. The boys are putting in all this hard work and they get to compete, but I'm doing all this hard work and I don't. And so I think my dad just didn't take me seriously. He knew that I was very shy, you know, um, very <laughs> uh, insecure and lacking confidence. And so I don't think he thought I'd ever step on a mat. So he goes, okay, you know, I'll make you a bet. If you uh, win your first match, I'll let you continue wrestling. And um, so I step on the mat and that's the only match I won all year, <laughs> but I got to continue wrestling. So I was one in 30 that year. <laughs> and for how long did you wrestle against the boys? Um, I started wrestling the boys when I was seven and I wrestled up until I was um, 17. I moved away for my senior year to um, Northern Michigan, the U.S. Olympic Education Center. So that's when I started training uh, full-time freestyle and um, with women. And you've made a lot of changes the last four years to get to where you are today as an Olympic gold medalist. Mm -hmm. um, you have worked with your coach, Valentine. You've mm -hmm. moved to the West Coast. Yes. Can you just tell us a little bit more about what you've done to build for this moment? Yeah, after losing at the U.S. Olympic Trials in 2012, I just kind of sat down and said, okay, God, what do I need to change for these next four years? Uh, I still have the passion, I still have the drive, I still really want this goal, but I'm not seeing the results I want, and so whatever needs to be sacrificed, I'm all in. And um, I met Valentin in 2014, and he, you know, he said, look, I, I, um, I can coach you, but, because uh, I asked him to work with me, he said, I can coach you, but I can't promise you that we have a place to train. I can't even promise you we have a schedule a week in advance. I mean, we didn't have partners in California. He'd be calling up, you know, some of his buddies that retired or that he used to coach. And, um, you know, I might train with a 40-year-old retired guy, um, Sheldon, who's still really fast and very athletic, or I would, you know, train with some young high school kids, and it was just whatever we could find. And so um, it wasn't the ideal training situation as far as we had everything provided for us, but uh, I just felt, you know what, more than anything, I, I need a good coach. I need someone who wants to stream as badly as I do, and I know that he'll do whatever it takes to um, get me what I need and, and get me prepared and so that was a huge sacrifice and so moving to California and uh, um, you know when I moved there I'm actually so lucky that my best friend Victoria Anthony her dad lives there and he let myself and my teammate Elena Pershkova he turned his office into a bedroom so that we could live there for a year but <laughs> we didn't want bunk beds so we just <laughs> shared a bed for a year and it, it was just a crazy um, training and living it was a crazy lifestyle for about two years, so, but it all paid off. Now, you've also been very um, open about 
making weight yeah. and the challenges of doing that. Yeah. Um, have you heard a lot of feedback from other women, female wrestlers, who um, have said that that's helped them to hear you talk about it? Not uh, yet. Well, no, I don't think so. Um, I, uh, you know, when when I was making weight, I would. Um, there were some other girls on the team that were cutting a lot of weight as well, and so one of the younger girls that I. Um, would talk to her about it and I know that that was helpful for her um, she expressed that to me as far as other wrestling girls um, you know I'm, I, I don't I don't know not in not specifically towards the diet do you think winning a gold medal in your sport will bring the next generation of girls young girls in, into it I mean they see that on television and say uh -huh. that's possible that's an opportunity for me too I ho I hope so I mean I, I think so that's my that's my dream is um you know, our, the national team coach, Terry Steiner, used to always say, uh, you know, we really need um, to bring a gold medal back, you know, for the USA because girls need to, need to see it, need to see that the dream is possible, that you can achieve this. And, um, and so, you know, but I, but I think um, all the women that came before me that um, didn't come back with a gold medal, maybe a silver or bronze or just didn't medal at all, but I learned so much from them. I mean, I think, uh, I, I don't think a gold medal defines if you're a champion or not. It defines, you know, it tells you that you had a, a very good day and um, that, that you won a tournament. But I think um, those women that gave back to the sport, that came before me, that, um, you know, inspired me, that taught me what, what are the right things to do and, you know, how to sacrifice for your dream. I mean, that's been around for a while. I think what this medal is helping with um, a lot is just getting media attention so that girls that have never even known that women's wrestling is a sport can see it and they can say, wow, I can do that too, or that looks fun. And um, so I think that's hopefully where it's really helping a lot as well. And what's next for you? I know it's probably too soon to talk about <laughs> Tokyo in 2020, but you are planning to compete soon, right? Yes, I'm competing at the Golden Grand Prix in um, Azerbaijan in November, so I'm excited about that. Um, I love what I do, so I can't wait to get back on the mat again. And I definitely still plan to wrestle through 2020. That was always the goal. And so I know these next four years, it's, it's going to be different than the last, and it's going to present new challenges. But um, this is what I love about sport. It, it teaches you about yourself, and it, and it challenges you. And it's um, you know a, a platform for you to grow and develop and to just uh, learn about yourself. So I'm excited for what's, uh, for what's ahead. And I also noticed that Ronda Rousey tweeted yeah. a <laughs> Or maybe she posted an Instagram photo, yeah. but I'm wondering if MMA is ever <laughs> something you think about maybe down the road. Yeah, so it was cool to see Ronda Rousey went from you know Olympic medalist to MMA champion. That's awesome to see, um, and it definitely <laughs> is tempting. And uh, it seems like it would be a lot of fun to do. Right now, I you know I, I love wrestling. Wrestling's always been my passion, um, and I think just um, being. Uh, America's first gold medalist. I feel like it's not a duty. It's um, it's a responsibility, but it's also an honor. And um, I, I think it's a joy for me to stick around in this sport and to inspire these young girls and to um, help them to achieve their dreams in wrestling. And so I don't want to walk away from this sport anytime soon. And you're 24, and you're a competitor for the gold medal match. She was in her 30s, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a sport where yeah, athletes can compete a long time. Yeah, yeah, the peak age um, for women's wrestling is actually normally on the older end, late 20s, um, uh, you, just because it's, <laughs> you, it's a lot of experience. It's, um, there's a, a wisdom and a maturity and an experience that, um, or a wisdom and a maturity that just comes through lots of experience. And so um, I'm excited for that because it gives me joy to know that I can stick, you know, um, keep wrestling. Do you ever think about coaching girls? Yeah, yeah. I'm... You know what, I would love for women's wrestling to be added to uh, NCAA Division I programs. Um, I myself am not planning on retiring right now, but I know some women in the program that are, and even my, my training partner, Clarissa Chen, for example, she's a world champion. She was the 2012 bronze medalist. I mean, she was so tremendous to have. Um, you know, she was my training partner, but it, she was so inspiring. Uh, she was my, um, my mentor, you know, she was my role model. and. Um, to have her there with me, helping me to achieve this goal, it was like, you know, Coach Valentine and I would tell her, like, man, you're going to make an amazing coach, but what opportunities are there for her right now? And so um, I think it's hard because re women that are retiring, you know, they would love to coach, but if there's no opportunities, then they're being forced to, you know, take a different career path. And so I would love to see um, more opportunities for that open up, open up. And um, when I, you know, eventually move on into that route, I would love to do that. Okay, last question. Um, this year for the Olympics, women had more weight classes um, mm -hmm. 
after a decision by the IOC to give mm -hmm. more opportunities to women. Do you think that the sport has found its equal balance in terms of having female representation, or is there still work to be done? Um, well, that's, you know, there's always something to be done, but I think, uh, you know, what United World Wrestling did with adding weights and, um, you know, just having more Olympic weights, it's been incredible because I think it um, just kind of showed, uh, you know, each national governing body that, hey, you know, there's just as many gold medals to win for the women as there are for the men. And so we need to put our resources and we need to make sure that there's good coaches and, um, you know, good training plans and everything because there's just as many medals to win. And um, you see that in countries like Russia where some of the, you know, very accomplished men, men's coaches are were hired to be the women's coach and um, just other countries like that that have really put a lot more time and energy and resources into developing women's wrestling. And it's growing exponentially. So I think it's... Um, you know, it's, it's showing that there's a lot of growth and progress to be made. Okay, one more question, sorry. <laughs> um, I know you spoke to the Ravens a few <laughs> days ago, um, yeah. and one of the things you said in your speech was, you didn't have to be perfect in the gold medal match, you just had to be enough. Mm -hmm. I thought that was really yeah, cool. You. Were you nervous when you spoke to them? Yeah, <laughs> you know, um, that was not planned. I had met Coach Harbaugh um, in the tunnel, and I think it was just for, you know, some media and pictures, and just thanked him for having me out here, and. He asked me, uh, he said, did you know you were going to win before you, before you competed? And I'm like, here's this, you know, uh, amazing professional men's football coach. And I'm like, I'm just going to tell him the truth. And I said, honestly, no, I didn't. And so I just kind of told him that story. And he said, will you please tell that to my guys? And I was so nervous for the next hour. I mean, I was, and my mom even said, she said, I could tell you were so nervous. And then, then <laughs> right before I went to speak to them, I'm like, this is so funny. I'm about to go tell them that all I needed to be was enough to step out and win a gold medal and I don't think I'm enough right now to go into a room and talk to some you know grown professional NFL players and so I was like well if I said it then I'm gonna say it again and I was like alright Chris is in me I'm enough you know this you know I'm just gonna speak from the heart and I hope it goes well and I mean the guys were so awesome everyone was just super respectful you could tell it was just mutual respect athlete to athlete and um, that whole team is just amazing. I bet they wanted to see your medal right? <laughs> yeah. Well I was wearing it. Okay. So. <laughs> Thank you so much Helen. Thank you.